What's going on everybody? Jeff West here with Heli Direct and today we have the all new Goose Sky RS4 Venom. So we're going to start this build series. It's going to be a two part series and I will be doing the build. So we have the Goose Sky RS4 Venom with the red, white, and blue scheme. You can get it in two different other options, a pink scheme and a yellow. And of course we all will be running Torque Servos 508 on Cyclic, zero 604t on tail we will be running the goose sky 70 amp esc it fits i like the connectors right to it of course icon 2 and a spectrum srxl2 so let's go ahead and get started with this build hit that like button hit that subscribe button let's get started first part of the build is going to be assembling your blade grips in your thrust bearing so we have them laid out here i already pre-greased my thrust bearings using micro lube of course this is my preferred but you can use any grease that you like so we have our smaller ID, we have our thrust bearing, our large ID, and our head shim here. So that's how we are going to assemble them and make them into a stack on our blade grips. So we're gonna go ahead and we want the open side of your thrust bearing here, brace, and then we're gonna go close, open side, out. So this is going to be the blade grip bolt. This is going to be the block. Then we want our larger ID, and again, open side to sandwich our bearing, and then our shim. Then we're gonna take our blade grip here, and then we are just going to drop the whole stack down inside our grip. Go ahead, wipe off any excess, and do the exact same thing on this grip. So smaller ID, open side, grab your thrust bearing, close side towards the bolt, open side, larger ID, shim, and blade grip stack just like this, wipe off all the excess. So now our blade grips are assembled. Now we are gonna go ahead and install the ball ends onto the arms for our blade grip. So it's gonna be an M2 by six, one and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on your screw. Go ahead, insert through this side, and then you're gonna come back with your ball end, second one and a half millimeter driver, and tighten it up. Now do the exact same on your other one. One and a half millimeter driver, M2 by six, slide it through, grab your ball end, lock tight on your screw, all the way down, one and a half millimeter driver, and fully snug it up. So now we're gonna come back with our blade grip, our arm, and we're going to drop it down right onto this little knob here, and it will hold there. M2 by five, one and a half millimeter driver, screw it all the way in till it's tight and then do the exact same on the other one. So now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the head block and feathering shaft. So we're gonna take a little bit of micro lube on our finger here, and we're just going to coat our dampers. So these little guys are just gonna push right into here, just like that. Same on the other side, a little bit of micro lube, just give them a coat and push them right into there, just like that. Now we're gonna come back with our feathering shaft. Same thing, a little bit of micro lube on the shaft, and then go ahead and give it a push all the way through. Be careful not to get any into the threads feathering shaft. Then we're gonna come back, grab this little guy here, and we want the flat side to face the head block, the curved tapered side to go towards the blade grip. So that is going to push down just like this, and this side is going to push down just like this. Now we're gonna come back little bit more micro lube on our finger here, a little bit more on our finger, and we're just going to give our feathering shaft a nice little coat. Now that our feathering shaft has a little bit of micro lube on it, we're gonna come back with our feathering shaft bolts cleaned already in alcohol, put our washer on, lock tight on the screw, give it a nice little coat. What I like to do is put a little bead on, set it aside and let it run down into the screw. Do the same thing on the other one, lock tight, let it run down into the screw. Now we're gonna grab our head block, we're gonna grab our blade grip, and we are going to just slide this assembly down just like this. Careful not to push any of the bearings out. Come back, two and a half millimeter driver. We're just gonna get this started, and then we're gonna push the shaft all the way through, because it's too far on one side. Push it, come back with our second blade grip. Again, careful not to push the bearings out this side two and a half millimeter driver, tight already on our screw, get it started. Now we're gonna come back with two, two and a half millimeter drivers, one on each end and crank it down. 
free and smooth, no grittiness. Now our head is completely assembled. Wipe off any of the excess grease. Now grab your washout arms and you're gonna grab your little arms here. And notice on your washout arms, flat side is what we are going on. We do not want the goose guy side. So we want the tapered side of our arm facing the flat side. So what we're gonna do is grab one of our screws, one and a half millimeter driver, Loctite already on the screw. We're gonna grab one of these little shims right here. One of these little shims, and that's gonna go onto the screw. And then we're gonna take our arm, we're working with the flat side, and go ahead and get that one all the way in. Tighten it up, and then do your other one the same, and tighten that one up. So now we have two arms done. Now we're gonna come back with our screws again. So we're gonna come back with a screw, and then we're going to put a washer on that screw. We're gonna slide that whole assembly through our arm, goose guy facing towards the head of the screw. Come back with another washer. Go ahead, get that onto there. Dab of Loctite, then come with your head block. And we're going to be going after this hole right here that is threaded on the left side. Goose guy facing out, tighten it all the way up. So this is what it should look like. And then do the exact same on the other side. And then on this side, we'll be going after the right hole with, or the left hole again, tighten it down. Now both of our mixer arms are on, free, smooth, no binding, no gritty. So now our head assembly is completed. Grab your swash plate. And we're gonna go ahead and get all of the ball ends put on the swash plate, lock tight it down. Now notice it says goose guy right here. That's the front of the helicopter. So all the balls are gonna be the same for exception of your anti-rotation pin, which is gonna go directly in the back. So lock tight on our threads, go ahead, get that one all the way down and tightened up. Now you're gonna take your one and a half millimeter driver and go ahead and get all the balls and all the way around and tighten down. Then of course, finish by hand. So now our swash plate is completed. Now grab your lower bearing block servo mount, and this is going to be the front, and this is going to be the back. We need these two holes here. So this is the left side, just the right side. I'm gonna flip this over while we are working, and of course it goes the other way. So we need a two and a half millimeter driver, our screw, a tiny shim, and we're gonna go through our tail pulley now notice this is the side that's going to mount onto the block, so we want our screw to go through this side. And then we need a, another shim, which is this guy right here, and you want it to face flat side towards the block, tapered side towards the actual pulley. You're gonna slide that down, lock tight, and you're going to screw that right into here. Again, this is the bottom that we are working on. Go ahead, get that one done, and then do the exact same for the other one. Now that we got both of our tail pulleys on, make sure they are smooth, no binding or anything. Now we're gonna flip it back over. This is the way it's gonna go. Now we're gonna grab our main bearing, main shaft holder, and you will notice that there is two notches. There's a notch there and a notch there. That is going to go down. The top part does not have any notches. So we're going to push flat into this side and you will notice on the bottom side, there is a recessed area for your screws. So this is going to go into here just like this. It's gonna be a snug fit, but push it all the way down and line up your screw holes. So you might have to just give a little twist. One and a half millimeter driver, small screw, Loctite on our screw. Go ahead and put both of those into there, tighten all the way down. Now that that side is done, we are going to flip it over and we're gonna grab our upper bearing block assembly. We want the RS4 to go up and to face the front. So this is the back. So this is going to push down onto here, just like this. Now that is fitted and we're going to line up our screw holes. Now we're gonna come back with this little carbon fiber plate and it is going to sit on top. One and a half millimeter driver, longer screws here. Just gonna run it through. Get that one started, run it almost till it's tight. Come back with our second one, one and a half millimeter driver, run it all the way down and tighten both of them up completely. Now our bearing block servo holder assembly is done. Now we need our servo horns. Now in the manual, they tell you to go 12 and a half millimeters from your center of your screw hole to your ball end. So on these torque servos, 
The second hole on these horns is about 12.4 millimeters, so that is perfect. One and a half millimeter driver, our ball end to that hole there, you're gonna get it started. Once you get it going to about right there, come back with your lock nut, of course no Loctite or anything, get your lock nut started. One thing I really like that Goose Sky includes a lock nut because I am a firm believer you should have a lock nut on the back of these horns to stop the ball from ever popping out. Now go ahead and tighten that all the way down. Now do the exact same on your other two. Now grab your servo. If you're looking at it like this, this is the left side, that's the right side. You want the horn to go on to the right side. So center your servos, which I've already done. Lock tight your servo screw and run it down. Now do the exact same to your other two cyclic servos. Grab your main bearing block servo assembly. And we're gonna start with our front servo here. So we're gonna take our front cyclic servo. We are just going to feed it into here. Drop it down. We're gonna be using four one and a half millimeter driver screws per servo. So you're gonna go ahead and get your first screw started work your way down to your second screw here and then come back and do the exact same on all four screws and then your other servos are going to drop into here like this and your other one is going to drop into here like this <laughs> servo assembly is done if you have a problem getting your servos to fit in because of the actual wire coming out of the case i would recommend loosening up your top two screws letting the whole bearing block top come up just a little bit and then your servos will fit in there nicely and then you can tighten everything back down it just can be a little bit of a pain because of how far out your top of your wire sticks so now all of our servos are done this is the front of the helicopter so this is what your servo should look like now we're going to assemble the tail pulley. This is the top of the pulley. This is the bottom of the pulley. You have two carbon fiber plates. And if you notice, one side has countersunk holes and one side does not. So we are going to line it up. Now, of course, it does not matter if you start with the top or the bottom. And we are going to take some of these little tiny Phillips screws, these little tiny screws, and we want the countersunk facing up. And there's gonna be three screws top, three screws bottom, Go ahead and get all the other two on this side and the three on this side. Now this is what it should look like when you are done. Now we're gonna grab this incredible looking motor. Now the motor is different than the original RS4 and they say it has more power. So I'm excited to try that out. So now we're gonna grab the motor and we want this side with the wires, wires facing forward. That's the top of the motor. One way bearing is already installed. We still need to put a little grease in there. So we're gonna face the wires forward. And we're gonna grab this plate here. This is the motor mount. And you'll notice the countersunk holes here. We want those facing up and this lip here facing down. We want this section here to face our wires and we wanna drop this into here just like this. Now we're gonna grab our two and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on our screw. Go ahead and get that one started. Come back with our second screw, lock tight already on it. Go ahead, get that one started. And we'll come back with our third Loctite on it and screw that one down. And then go back and tighten up all three screws. So now all three screws are tightened. Before we install our one-way sleeve, we need to put some grease onto our one-way bearing. I prefer this, I use the SAB one-way bearing grease. So I'm gonna put a little bit on a toothpick here and I'm just going to take that toothpick and shove it down into that bearing and just kind of work it around, just like that, get it down in there. Now that I'm happy with that, we're gonna come back with our sleeve here and our sleeve is gonna go in through the bottom with this mount that we just made. And we're just gonna push that sleeve up. A Little bit of the grease came out, that's okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tail pulley and pay attention, we want the flat side here for the nut and we want to go through our hole here. So we're just going to slide this up just like that. Our hole comes out there. We are going to take our main shaft and pay attention on the main shaft. You have a bigger gap from the first hole 
The smaller side to the hole is for the head block, longer side for the motor. So now we're gonna slide this assembly through, gonna line up our hole here, come back with our main shaft screw. We're just going to push this assembly together. Two millimeter driver and work that screw all the way through until this side comes out. Grab your lock nut, no lock tight, get it started, tighten it all the way up. Now tighten it down. So now our motor, pulley, and main shaft assembly is done. So we're going to assemble the battery latch now, and you're gonna take this little flat piece of carbon with the countersunk holes up. You're gonna take this little red anodized, which is your pull tab for the battery release, and you are going to take a real tiny little Phillips through that hole, Loctite already on it, Go ahead, tighten that one down, and then do the exact same on the front screw there. Now we're gonna take our carbon fiber frame side, we're gonna take one of our battery rails, and we want the opened end to the front of the helicopter, closed end to the back. We're gonna be going after these screws, but on the inside here, and we are going to line up all of our screw holes. We are gonna take our battery latch that we just assembled. It's gonna drop into here, and we are going to come back through one and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw, Go ahead, get that guy started. Come back with the bottom one, and then you're gonna have one in the front, or one in the back, two in the front, and those are going to be the little shorter ones, the M1.6 by four millimeter. Now we got all of our screws in, Loctited. Now remember on the other side, everything's gonna be the same, so everything we're doing now, you're gonna copy, exception of the battery latch. Now you're gonna take this little rubber stopper here, and it is going to insert into here just like this, and you can take a little driver and just help push it down into place. Once you get that into place, that helps stop the battery tray from coming out, come from the backside and just pull it up till it all fits. And now we're gonna come back and do our canopy posts. So we're gonna be going after the front for this hole here. It's going to be a M two and a half by five Loctite on our screw. We're gonna come in from the backside with the short canopy post here. We're gonna get it started, tighten it down. Coming in from the back side here, long canopy post, Loctite on our screw and tighten it all the way down. So now we got one frame side completed. You're gonna do the exact same on the other side, making a left and a right. Now that we got our left and right frame side made, we're gonna grab our left frame side here. We're gonna grab our motor assembly and we are going to start putting this whole thing together. So now they tell you if there's a gap to put a shim. So we're gonna add one shim on the shaft here, slide it down. We're gonna take our servo assembly and we're gonna slide that on, take our tail belt first, get our tail belt slid into place here. Wires are gonna be to the front. We're gonna grab our servo assembly and we want the pulleys to the back. We're gonna slide that whole assembly down. And then we are going to start with our left frame side. We're gonna get our left frame side put into place here, just like this. And we're gonna start with just using one screw in the top just to kind of hold this whole assembly together. So we're gonna lock tight on our screw, one and a half millimeter driver. Go ahead, get that one started. Come back with our second screw here. We're gonna put it into this corner, get that one started, snug it up. Then we're going to align our motor mount here. We're gonna grab the left side motor guard, which is very nice that Goose Guy included motor guards with the Venom. So now we need our M two and a half by eight Loctite on our screw. We're going to slide this through here and get one screw started. Come back with our second M two and a half by eight is going to go into this hole here. Once you get this side, one frame side secured, it makes everything easier and you're not fighting everything. Now come back, tighten your other two up, put your other two screws in, and then do the exact same on the other side. Now that we got both sides in, got everything tightened down, we're gonna go ahead and install the boom blocks themselves. So now pay attention to where your clamping surface is, this little notch here, you want that to be down into the left side, the left side of the helicopter. So we're going to slide our boom clamps through the tail belt. So now that we got them through the belt, we're gonna come up through the main frame here and we're going to be going off of these two holes and these two holes. So again, our 
actual clamp. We want the down cut side to be down to the left side of the helicopter. We're gonna slide those into position, line up our screw holes, and we're going to put a screw in Loctite on it already. Get that screw started. Then we're gonna come back with our second one. Same thing, line it up. We want it to be in those two holes right here. Line up our threads, one and a half millimeter driver, M two and a half by five millimeter screw. Get one screw started and then you go back, put the bottom screw in and the other two sides. And now we're gonna go ahead and install our frame spacers. Now the front first one towards the bearing, the bearing block and servo mount is just gonna go in here, go off this first hole right here and we're just going to use our M two and a half by five screws, or M two and a half by five screws, one and a half millimeter driver, tighten that side down, and you're going to flip it around and do the exact same onto this side here and tighten that one all the way down. Now, when you get to the front one, you're going to put your spacer in. It's gonna be going off of these front screw holes here. Put that spacer in, but you're gonna come through with the longer M two and a half by 10 screws, and you're going to insert this spacer post here, Loctite on your screw, and go ahead and get that on both sides, done the same exact way. Tighten that one up, and then do the exact same on the other side, and then we're going to put these little rubber caps on when we are done, and then tighten them both down, and then you can put your little rubber caps, which help keep the canopy up off the frame side. And now we're gonna take our landing skids, landing gear. We're gonna take these little lock nuts and they are going to insert into the skids just like this, one for each side. So now we have all four of them in. Be careful because they will pop out very easily. So now we are going to come back with our one and a half millimeter driver and our M two and a half by eight screws. No Loctite because there is lock nuts and you are going to be going after these holes on your mainframe and you're just going to drop the skids, the frame on top of the skids and go ahead and get all these screwed in. Use your finger through the back side so you don't drop the nut out the other side and then just get them started and run all of them. We have our tail servo mount here and it is going to be going off of these two screw holes here and you want it to sit just like this. This is the front of the helicopter this way, the back of the helicopter, of course. So now we are gonna come back with our M2 and a half by eight millimeter screws, Loctite on our threads, and we are going to get the servo mount mounted for our tail servo. And of course, finish tightening all the way down. So now that tail servo mount is installed. I like the red anodized. We're gonna mount our fly barless mount here. So we want our countersunk holes facing up. This is the back of the mount, the front of the mount. So it's gonna sit down in here just like this. Come back with our little tiny countersunk screw, one and a half millimeter driver, and get that screw started. And then you're going to do the exact same for your other three. So I'm gonna go ahead and end part one off here. In part two, we will get this thing finished up, wired up, and ready to fly. So if you guys want, head on over to Heli Direct, pre-order yours now, and build it along with me. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Take care and have a great day.